Yeah, let's dive into the stem cells a little bit more. Um, I think over the last several years, there's been um, it seems to be real hit or miss. You know, people are are like, no, it doesn't work. And then some people are like, well, you have to go to a different country. Um, you know, what are some of the differences in our stem cells? Uh, in from what you're seeing, are they working well for people? Um, more and more because there's like new technology or what's kind of going on with stem cells? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of charlatans in the space, right? They're like, stem cells will fix you everything. You just put them, you can put them here, you can do this and for this, you can cure Alzheimer's, you can do for spinal cord injury. So there's a lot. That is the way they kind of say, say it sometimes. Like it will fix everything. You exactly. Just put it, you just, just put it in your elbow. Just put it everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you'll be good. You'll be a brand new person. And that's And that's where, even for me, I had a hard time getting into it because I thought it was so snake oil salesman like you know what I mean and there's a lot of predatory marketing where they're just using celebrity endorsements and then it's like what's the real science behind it so obviously before I got into it I started diving into the science uh, and I was lucky because I worked in the Middle East and then I worked in Japan and Europe so I got different perspectives on like how are they actually doing stem cells and what I learned is it's really about the manufacturing process so it's like how do you grow the stem cells mm -hmm. so just like I always kind of equate it to like electric vehicle batteries. If you remember like electric vehicle batteries in 2010, if you bought a Tesla, it was a pretty bad, pretty bad car. Like it wasn't great and it didn't go very far and the battery technology wasn't very good. But over time, it got better and better. So similarly, stem cell manufacturing has got better and better over the last couple of years. So now we're at a point where we can grow them in a way which allows them to survive better and it also allows them to do their function better. Mm -hmm. And so this is called, there's gene edited stem cells where you actually edit them to do specific targeted things and help protect them from the immune system. Uh, and then you can also do something called biomaterials, which are actually, you use 3D bioprinting or hydrogels, which are like little scaffolds that basically form around the stem cells and basically protect them from your body's own immune system because the biggest problem with like IV umbilical cord stem cells and all these things is they don't stay in your body very long so a lot of people think and that's gonna, what most people do that's what most people do and okay. the problem is they're basically they're thinking they're going to regrow all these new tissue and stuff like that but really they're just signaling molecules so because they're just the stem cells send signals that help to repair and regenerate tissue mm -hmm. but they're not really engrafting so it's called paracrine signaling, where they're sending signals, but not engrafting into new tissue. So the hot area of research is like, hey, how do we make them actually engraft and grow new tissue? And that's where biomaterials come in and gene editing technology comes in, because we can actually get them to work better and stay in longer. Hmm. So, for example, I think the coolest technology I learned about was in Japan. They, there's a guy named Professor Yamanaka. He got the Nobel Prize about like eight years ago uh, for basically figuring out how to take any cell in your body and reprogramming it into a naked stem cell, like an embryonic stem cell, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. It's like your body has this memory to it essentially... Like swipes it clean, kind of. Literally, huh? yeah. Wow. So, it, But the fact that your body can even do that with genetic mm. reprogramming is pretty impressive. Yeah. That means your body has this innate desire or ability to heal. That's what it tells me. And so we're just trying to like, we're trying to demystify it. And so, we, but it's pretty, but basically what that does is it makes it into an embryonic stem cell. But the problem with embryonic stem cells is that they, they're too strong. They can grow into tumors. So, so they're called induced pluripotent stem cells or IPSC. But the problem with IPSC, no one can figure out like, how do we make this work clinically without causing tumors? Until there's, there's a group in, in actually from Canada that, that figured out how to do a gene edited IPSC so it prevents uncontrolled proliferation. Mm. So they have clinical grade ones. So that's the technology that we're using now. Mm. And that's like the next generation technology. I call it second generation stem cells because they're gene edited and they're targeted for specific conditions. So there's like specific ones for osteoarthritis. There's specific ones for like diabetes, like islet cells that you can inject into the pancreas. Mm. There's neuroprogenitor cells that you can use for de neurodegenerative conditions. So it's getting more and more precise, right? It's precision medicine instead of just being like umbilical core stem cells for everyone. Yeah. Let me ask you this real quick about stem cells because one thing you do see is like you I've seen posts from high level grapplers going I'm not going to name specific companies but they're going to get stem cells done, right? You see it from a lot of people who get injuries. If somebody is like I want stem cells now, I'm going to go to this company, what are the questions that they should ask so they know maybe what red flags to pay attention to because I think you've mentioned there's no other company that's kind of doing what you guys are currently doing. But yeah. No, there isn't. And the problem is the doctors who are promoting it aren't typically scientists and the people who start these companies are typically <clears throat> businessmen. So like BioAccelerator is a perfect example. It started by a businessman. So what's the businessman going to try to do? He's going to try to promote stem cells for as much as possible. Yeah. They, don't, they don't really necessarily care about the quality uh, and the science because the science is evolving so fast. And so the questions I would ask is what 
testing are you doing first of all on the stem cells in terms of like quality control mm -hmm. like are they doing something called flow cytometry which is to test and make sure that the stem cell markers are actually reflective of what the cells should be so flow cytometry is basically just like a is like a special <coughs> assay that they do to see if the cells actually have the markers there's something called cell markers and mm -hmm. the stem cells express these certain cell markers and so the flow cytometry can just tell you that so that's one way. Yeah. Uh, and then the other way is like, what's the actual manufacturing process? This is detailed questions, but I would, the, the simplest thing you can ask is how many passages the stem cells go through. So this is when you transfer it from one flask to another. So why is that important? Because if you, if you transfer it too many flasks, like when you're growing them, then the cells can become senescent and they don't survive. Mm -hmm. And then they actually cause more inflammation and can, can actually make you worse. Yeah. So you gotta be careful where you go for stem cells. They're not always harmless, right? Uh -huh. And that's why we, we our manufacturer, we, I work with them closely on the culture medium, the expansion process, how we're doing it. So we make sure that we're not doing more than like four to six passages. But I know for a fact, a lot of the companies in South America are doing like 10 passages. And so you're gonna have higher risk of senescence and then you're gonna have higher, higher risk of having other problems with that. And of course it works for a lot of people, but just about, there are a lot of people it doesn't work for. And like, you know, Ed Cohn is a perfect example because he's talked about it openly with me and he's promoted it with me. And we, he went to Panama and it didn't work for him. He still had shoulder issues. Um, because of that. Because of that. It wasn't good quality. And it was also, it wasn't done the right way. Like the injection wasn't in the right spot. So we have, we're really good with like image guided techniques. That's kind of like, our claim to fame, so to speak, was our ultrasound. We're able to find small tears. We're able to find things that even MRIs miss. And then we can do the direct injections right into there. Because uh, the stem cells do have a bit of a homing mechanism, but they're not going to magically just go everywhere and repair your, your tissue. You have to get it into the right spot. Yeah. Like there is a systemic effect if you do IV, but for like specific medical conditions like a rotator cuff tear or osteoarthritis, you really need to go into the area to get the best result. And so the biggest problem I see is the interventional aspect and then obviously the quality. So I think if you're going to go to someone, you should figure out what their, like, what's their interventional skill set. You know, like, are they actually experienced physicians doing interventional pain and spine and like all these different procedures? A lot of them aren't. And they're just, you know, and they're just kind of like getting into the stem cell world because it's a hot topic, but they don't actually know what they're doing. What uh, what's something that kind of changed your mind about it? Like uh, when you saw maybe it being utilized in the company that you're with or you started utilizing it more in, in practice, what was something where you were like, like this, this not only works, but it works way better than I ever really thought. It, yeah, it was when I was in Dubai. So I worked in Dubai for four months this year and uh, it really changed my whole perspective because they've been doing it for nine years and over there there's no restrictions in terms of application of uh, expanded stem cells. Mm -hmm. And all the people I was treating were getting better. And I treated like the royal families and like, you don't screw up with those guys because if they if you if you don't make them better or if they get infection or something goes bad like you're dead. Oh, you're literally dead. <laughs> no, there's no there's no recourse there, right? <laughs> so you have actually a picture on your Instagram with um a little Muhammad. bit on the line. Yeah, Alabar. He's the richest Al man in the uh, Middle East. He's uh, he built from, the uh, Jordan or oh yeah, that's him. Yeah, he's from yeah yeah. He's from uh, no, he's from Dubai. Dubai. So he built he owns that. This guy's hilarious. So he owns that the tallest he owns the six tallest buildings in the world, including the Burj Khalifa, which is behind. <laughs> Us. So he made a. He wanted to. Take, oh, what? <laughs> yeah. So he wanted to take a picture, and but he wanted good lighting. So he's like. <laughs> so he literally made a call. I'm not taking that picture. You know, like here, hold my phone. Take a picture. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. So he literally made a call, and then they do the light show for him. And the, on that building on behind that him, building, it's the world's biggest screen, and it costs. Wow. Guess how much it costs if you want? If you're not the owner of it, if you want to display something on there, twenty million dollars, <laughs> fifty thousand dollars per minute. Oh wow. Whoa, that, that's, that's still, that's a I lot. I can't math what 50. that would be an hour. <laughs> it didn't cost him shit. <laughs> Man owns the building. That's amazing. So that, my, that was kind of my, I guess, claim to fame because uh, when I treated him, he posted about it, which was really nice of him. And everyone in the Middle East knows who he is, including all the royals. Because yeah. he was a guy who built Dubai. Dude, Dubai what? is a reason it is because Mohammed Alibar had the vision of saying, I want to make Dubai the tourist hub in the world. Mm. So he, made, he had the vision of the mall. He owns the mall, the Dubai mall, the Burj Khalifa, all the big attractions. He owns them all. Yeah. And it was his vision. And he had a shoulder issue for like 20 years. And basically the doctors there are just like, let's do cortisone. Didn't work. Uh, MRI was normal. So they're just like, okay, I guess there's nothing. Just do physio. So he's just literally been doing physio for 20 years once a week. <laughs> and so we come in there, we find, we use our ultrasound and we find two small tears and we fix it with just like PRP. It was like, it was an easy fix, but Wait, he was just so a happy. PRP injection. Yeah. 
And because for a lot of like tendon tears and stuff like that, PRP works great. Mm -hmm. And then his wife had a similar issue. She couldn't sleep at night for like six months. And I, I, we found some small tears in her knees that were missed on MRI, fixed it up. And now she can sleep. And he was so happy. He was more happy about his wife being able to sleep than his own issue. But it was just like, the point is like, yes. you know, it's like, why are these people seeking this out? Right. Wow. Yeah. The light show is pretty amazing. And he's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's just, I found it so hilarious that he could just make a phone call and <laughs> light my building up, dog. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but also light my building because I need to take a selfie. <laughs> take a selfie. <laughs> That's, That's so dope. <laughs> but, but sir, it's $50,000 a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. 